just brings up. This is, history repeats itself. Um, and we would look at the Coast Salish people and our First Nations people who were on this earth, on this land, before we were ever here. So I do make a, a real practice now of a, acknowledging the land and the people that were here before us. With that being said, um, the, an interesting story that ties in perfectly to what our panel has spoken about. And even though it's park board, I, short story, had an opportunity. I got an email from a woman who said, could I meet you? And usually it's about dog parks or it's about whales or it's about community centers or something like that. And we met in the downtown east side and she started to tell me, and I'm not in a position to say where she works, but she started to tell me about um, people, young women that were in Vancouver that were here through the slave trade and here um, hidden away and had been sold by their families for body parts. And what she was telling me was they <coughs> were spiritually broken, they were found uh, by people in gangs, they were found in some of the trains that come into the port of Vancouver. They had been rescued and they were in a facility in Vancouver and what they really, really wanted to do is to work out, to get healthy. So she had asked me, can the park board help? Is there anything we can do to keep these women healthy? The more she started telling me stories, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is in Vancouver. These are women from Africa, girls, actually girls, girls from China girls from actually all over the world, all girls. And many of them, once they arrived here, they have no visas, no passports, they don't speak the language, um, had been actually sold by their own families for money. Um, and it just broke my heart. So I think, and I tie this into as well as, as the struggles of women. We're talking here about Africa, but right now in Vancouver we have honor killings. We have women that are being killed because their families are asking the men to go out and kill these girls because they're marrying the wrong person or they're wearing makeup at school. It is happening in our own environment, in our own country, in our own city. And it's not talked about. It doesn't make the news as, m as much as other things do. Um, I see money, it's, there's a lot of money, money, money going on here as well. We talked about Africa, you talk about the blood diamonds, you talk about control and greed that I think just, it makes people not think straight and it makes people do things that are absolutely unacceptable. For me, I think what I would like to say is we can make a change here, and it, it almost becomes that I bike past every uh, you know, Tuesday on the Broad Street Bridge, and I see Judy Graves, my friend out there, with her son, with her sign, and it almost you almost become detached because it's so far away. It's like, what can you do? I would also suggest that you you send a letter to the mayor and council. You send a letter to your member of parliament. You send a letter to your member of the legislative assembly. You send a letter to your school board uh, trustee, your park board people, your people that are elected so that they take it at a municipal level, a provincial level, and the federal level. Because when that pressure is on, and I do battle with a lot of things that our federal government are doing right now, when the, when the pressure is on, they have to listen. They have no choice but to listen. Or your next option is, is to next day you go in to vote or the next time there's, a, there's an election, that's where you have that opportunity to speak up and say you are not doing what the community is asking you to do, you are not addressing these issues and that's where you go and you check who you feel is going to support this move and, and the movement. Um, I would also really like to thank you very much, Senator, for the words you said about my dad. He had four girls. Well, actually, my mom had four girls. <laughs> Laverne had four girls, and he had one boy. There was nothing that he did not expect us to do the same as his son. It didn't matter if it was out there with a the chainsaw. It didn't matter if it was out there digging up trees, because he was always working us, working us. And he'd go, oh, no, get in there. Get your back in there. Get your back in there. And he'd make you work it. It didn't matter to my father that we were, as they used to call it, the weaker sex. There was no weaker sex. Women are incredibly powerful. We are the backbone. We have incredible strength. Education has got to be number one. And what education is, what I keep hearing over, education means it's fear. 
because once women are educated, they will take it to the limit. And so you you have a situation in Africa where they know once these women are educated, they're going to take it and they're going to run with it, and change is going to happen. So they're fearful because it, I mean, during Black History Month, there was a story about these young women, and I believe it was South Africa, who learned how to make ice cream. Not only did they learn how to make ice cream, they they started a franchise, they had their own ice cream parlor, they started making money, and with that money they built schools, and with the schools they started educating young girls, and all of a sudden, there's like this ripple effect, and these young girls are getting strong, and they're realizing I've got some power, I've got a mind, I can use my strength, I can use my energy, I can speak my voice, and all of a sudden the men are like, damn, <laughs> you know, this is, this is scary, because the next thing you know, these women are going to be running the country. And when they're running the country, those wars are going to cease to be. I don't know if there's anybody here that saw Hillary Clinton. Powerful. She has gone to countries where women have been kicked down, beaten down, torn apart. And they have got up and fought and fought and fought and fought and ended up running, running countries, which are now free and clear of war. People are working together from every color, every race, every background. They're working together. And women do have the power to do that. So I urge you to keep going out, keep talking. Write whoever you can that you feel is an elected official that, that you put a mark beside because that's their job. That's our job. We are here to represent you. We're here to speak your mind. We're here to bring up the issues that you bring forward. And that's what our job is as, as an elected. And it doesn't really matter what, what level it is. So. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm going to stop chatting because it's sometimes better to listen to the people in the audience. That's where you get a lot only for myself. I hear many things that my mind doesn't think about. And it's usually, the, it's you folks that are the ones that have the good questions. And then I take them back and you try and get those answers and bring them forward uh, for me at the municipal, hopefully, federal <laughs> level. So thank you very much.